Hello and welcome to the November edition of Turf Moor. As the Clarets prepare to host Spurs this weekend, we're back with another feature-filled show. We speak to Ashley Cole and Jolian Lescott ahead of England Under-21's European Championship qualifier. Burnley FC women's Sammy Fleck brings us an insight into her family baking business. We round up the best of Burnley's brand new audio platforms. And man of the moment, Maxwell Corne talks life at Burnley. Well, kicking things off, Phil Bird recently had the pleasure of welcoming George Boyd into the commentary box following the former Clarets retirement from football. Good afternoon and welcome to Turf Moor. Burnley entertained Premier League new boys Brentford today. Exactly nine years since Sean Dyche came to Turf Moor. Burnley did the double over the Londoners for the 2015-16 season. George Boyd is here. Fantastic memories of that win at Griffin Park. Yeah, good afternoon. Yeah, what a game that was. For about half an hour we absolutely battered them, didn't we? And could have been five or six uh, down their place. But um, it was that run of games where we could beat anyone. Um, we needed to. I think that was the massive 20, how many, 26, 23, 23, 23 games, wasn't it? Yeah. So um, yeah, we're full of confidence. It was a great win down there in London. Joey's free kick was it was brilliant. Scotty's uh, te the technical ability to do that was brilliant, and I was quite happy with mine. <laughs> I'm sure you were, and Joey would have been happy with his free kick yeah. as well. Uh, news from you this week. In some ways, sad news. You've uh, you've, you've retired. Yeah, sad. But uh, I've been overwhelmed by the. The response, especially from the Burnley fans, it's been amazing. So, um, sort of makes you sad but happy because uh, you look back on when you write it down, all the achievements. Uh, I'm very proud. Yeah, I mean, you had a fantastic career, but the two promotions with Burnley must be right at the top of the list. Uh, yeah, I mean, the, the title winning season is my favourite season of all time. It, it's just the group that we had, and obviously, when you're winning every week, it, it helps. So, um, I, I think the squad and the staff we had at that stage were, were just so enjoyable, and I had a, lo a lovely three years here. Lowton looking early here for one decent ball. ball and he'll get onto it here yeah. oh, he's gone Chris Ward back to his best what a big goal that is for Burnley on four minutes fantastic ball through he took his time he finished it in style and Burnley got the goal they needed yeah what a ball by Louts uh, Johan does so well brings the defender out of his position and creates a massive gap for Woods to uh, run down what a finish I mean, you played a lot of games at Peterborough. I yeah. mean, you started, you had to start, really, from non-league. Yeah. Uh, I mean, you, you took, people talk about pampered Premier League players, but you had to come back the hard way, didn't you? Yeah, I, I always get asked this question. I always prefer to do it the way I've done. I've played at every level from the conference all the way to the to Premier League, so... I've loved every second of it, just getting kicked uh, when you're like 17 by some big 30 year old man. It's just, it's all part of the learning curve and I think it's helped me going up through the levels and I found it easier the higher you get because it's obviously more technical, you're not getting smashed every week in the, in the conference or League Two, so I found it easier the higher I've gone. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I do remember a story. You were working in a railway station sweet shop yeah. to, to get some money to, for, for training costs. Yeah, I, I was one of my good friends now. His dad owned Hitchin train station sweet shop, and um, yeah, I paid to get my train back to Kent every Friday, so that was that was good. Who were you trained with that time? Crystal Palace. Palace, yeah. Palace, yeah. <laughs> back for Taylor. He'll dig out across here. It's gone in deep. Keep it going. Go there. Yeah. Long turn. Oh, long turn with the header. Oh, his first goal at Turf Moor. And he's come with his head. Keeper started to come. Didn't get there. Matt Lawton's made it 2-0. Burnley 2. Brentford 0. Unlikely scorer. It matters not. Nice. No, snuck in there. I think the keeper's come to get it. He's sort of stopped midway through. And Louts has just come in and got the header. You were one of the very few players signed by Sean Dyche that went straight into the side. We talk about Dyche fit, you went straight in the side. Yeah, I think I was quite lucky in the fact that Tails got injured, did his Achilles when I came in. He was in that left, left right midfield position. So once you get that trust with the manager and you do the stuff that he wants, it's very hard to leave the team. And he saw that trust in a in a settled eleven. I think he likes yeah, that. He, yeah. doesn't, he doesn't like changing it that much. You played at Salford last season. Um, I'm sure there must be offered people will see you now and think you're fighting fit <laughs> but I, at 36, am, I am fit yeah but um, at 36 it's time to call yeah, it yeah I think it's nice when you can make the decision yourself I've not had a bad injury where I've had to quit um, it, the decision's been in my own hands and I'm, I'm happy to I'm at peace with it and you're playing plenty of tennis yeah keeping fit with tennis Tokoski comes away with the ball 
Helps it forward for Westwood on for McNeil. Central McNeil. Go on. For Corne. Takes it down uh, nicely. Can he finish it? Oh, oh, it oh, what a goal <laughs> from Maxwell Corne. What a finish. Magnificent goal. Really top finish. Welcome to Turf Moor, Maxwell Corne. What a goal that is. Oh, left foot, right foot, it doesn't matter, does it? Oh. That is top, top draw. I mean, if all the chances had gone, his touch wasn't the best first touch, um, but he's cut inside and just killed an absolute beauty in the top corner. And that's the half-time whistle. Puts uh, Brentford out of their misery somewhat. What a reception. They get in at half-time. Fantastic first half from Burnley. And then the Burnley move, you, you played Premier League football before Burnley with Hull, yeah. got to the FA Cup final under Steve Bruce. And I remember the day you signed, it was transfer deadline yeah, day, wasn't day. it? Yeah. Um, big money for Burnley at the time. Yeah, I think it was a record signing yeah. at the time. Um, but I think as soon as the, the gaffer took me around the place and he, he took me places where I could live, he showed me the area and I think he said this week, didn't he? He showed me the, the marsh where the training ground was going to yeah, be. Yeah, yeah, across the bridge. Yeah, yeah. he said, I want this to go there. The bridge. And yeah, he mentioned you in his press conference yeah, it was this not week, really which nice. was great, which yeah. was great. And that just shows how far the club came in those few years. The, yeah. the training ground now is fantastic. That's the final whistle. It's a big, big win for Burnley. They've won at home in the Premier League for the first time since January. George, thanks ever so much. Thank you. You're always welcome at Turf yeah, Moor, you know that. You thanks know that. Me. It's finished here. Burnley 3, Brentford 1. Burnley back to winning ways. First win of the season. And it's come at Turf Moor. Burnley 3, Brentford 1. As Turf Moor recently played host to the England Under-21's European Championship qualifiers, Ashley Cole and Jolie and Lescott were on hand to pay a visit to the Burnley FC Shadow Youth Team and bring an insight into the Young Lions camp. Well, Ashley, thank you for joining me. You've been to, at today's event for Burnley FC in the community Shadow Youth Team. Uh, you've seen some great football on the pitch. You've answered some uh, interesting questions in there too. Have you had a good day? Yeah, very good. You know, I think it's very important, uh, and I love what you're doing here. You know, really bringing the community together and, and giving you know the boys and girls here an opportunity to you know live a dream. So no, it's brilliant to come down, see some of the sessions, uh, meet some of the, the boys and girls, and, and answer some questions. Having these kind of facilities, you know, around and, and ready, and, and coaches putting their time on the line, I think it shows, you know, a great understanding. And you know, kids these days should be very privileged to be in that that situation. Like you all have something that you're really good at, and like make sure that that is your like super strength. That's your like your key attribute. That people, when people think about you, it's like wow, they're brilliant at that and be outstanding at it. Burnley are doing a great job here, uh, not just thinking, you know, about the senior team or the under 18s or under 60s, you know, we could see a future star here. So it's very important that you, you, you connect the club uh, with obviously the grassroots and, you know, the, the maybe not so privileged to, you know, had the opportunity to, to get to academy. This could be their step. Julian, thank you very much for joining us today. You had a good day? Yeah, great. Um, the weather's not great at the moment, but um, as I said, we've been up here a couple of days now. Um, great facility. Been training at the training ground. So, as I said, the facilities, the, the surface is amazing, um, the conditions. So, yeah, we're grateful that we've been given the opportunity to work there and obviously play at the stadium on, on Thursday. You've played at Turf more in the Premier League before. You know how, how great of an atmosphere can be created there. Yeah, definitely, and we're hoping there's there's multitude of fans in, in coming there to support the, the national team and, and make it as hostile as I've experienced for, for the opposition. So, yeah, if that's the case, um, I'm sure it won't be a pleasant occasion for the away team, but it'll be a great one for, for us. They're all important fixtures um, results-wise, um, obviously qualifications, but development obviously as well. But with us not being um, top of the group at the moment, obviously you've got a game in hand. It's key that we um, we win this game. But again, as long as the, the group is in our control um, and there's plenty more games for, for us to be in control of that situation, um, we'll, we'll keep fighting. Our aspirations is to qualify for, for the Euros for, for the under-21 level, but obviously our key um, attribute is to develop players and, and help them progress. And if they're part of the, the World Cup squad, then, then great. Uh, but if not, they're, and they're performing well for us, um, I'm sure Gareth is keeping an eye on that. 
you know, he never seemed flustered. He, he wasn't ever flustered in front of goal because he had his kind of key principles and what he does in front of goal. So I think Thierry Henry is, for me, number one. We're trying to give a platform and an opportunity for these younger boys with an eye on the pathway and you know ultimately they have to believe there's a pathway there's there's opportunity and i think gareth since he, he's you know been in charge of this, the senior team he's promoted a lot of young players from the 21s it's always nice to, to come to these places not just you know play at wembley uh, to visit different parts of the country and, and experience different things and you know, so far burnley's been brilliant Switching to women's football now, and we caught up with Sammy Fleck, who could have the recipe for another successful FA Cup run. Sammy, so thank you for having us here at Flex Cakes this afternoon. So it's your place of work. Just tell us a bit about the background and, and your job here. I took over the business I think five years ago now um, for my dad. My dad's had it for I think coming up to about 50 years now um, so it was nice to take over from him and keep, keep the family business going. My job is just to run the cake shop really, just make cakes for, um, for all like large occasions, birthday cakes, wedding cakes, christening cakes, everything like that. At first it was really difficult um, the, the hours that I were doing, like how busy we were, it's just, you never know what time you're going to finish. Um, so getting to training and like obviously it's three times a week now was was extremely difficult, but we've managed it. My mum my helps me out a lot with all that. This is my mum. Say hi mum. Hi mum. <laughs> no, say hi. Hi. <laughs> do we need to do that again? <laughs> <laughs> I enjoy it because like, I'm with like my family, my mum works here, so that's nice to be around my mum, like family popping and stuff like that. It's quite a relaxed atmosphere and like, like I say, like I've worked, lived here my whole life, so it's kind of comes a bit like second nature. I don't think too much about it, just stroll out of bed and walk down in the morning, but. <laughs> We're just getting the cake ready now, just gonna layer it up with jam and cream. After a little while, you kind of, Get into a bit of more of a routine. Have I have had to cut down the amount of cakes that I were doing just because we were so busy. So now I've got a bit of a limit on that, so I can kind of concentrate on on football a little bit more. Um, but yeah, it's just just about managing it. We do about like 90 to 100 cakes a week at the minute, so there are a lot that we do. I'd say the wedding cakes are more intricate, so. I think like when I do one of them, that's quite pleasing when I do one of them and obviously getting it to the venue in one piece is a bit... <laughs> so when it's there, that's quite quite good. Um, probably the last wedding cake that I did actually, which it was for half like the mechanic, so they wanted to incorporate that and then the other was for like a typical bride, glitzy glam, so they wanted to incorporate both of that into the cake. So we did half of tyres and then half like glam and then with the flowers cascading down and um, like little metal cogs and stuff like that going up in it so that, that was a good one that I did just recently. It is enjoyable like obviously you're, you're doing cakes for your customers for little kids and stuff like their faces coming in and when you when you're doing a cake it is like a nice feeling every time you give a cake out you do get so many nice nice comments and it, it is really nice to hear some of those. We're getting ready for the big Christmas rush coming up so that, that week up to Christmas is going to be absolutely manic. And Burnley will be thrilled because they are through to the second round of the FA Cup. I think things are really starting to come together. Um, we're playing some, like, playing some really good football going forward, another clean sheet so yeah happy, happy with everything that we did on Sunday. I think the second half was a bit We've seen it through, but again, when things aren't going your way and you can you can see games through like that, then um, I think that's another positive as well. Thomas finds Willis. Willis goes through Alexa and unleashes a vicious strike. 
And so the draw for the second round will face Fylde on the, the 28th of November. Looking forward to it. I think um, I think all the girls are, are excited for... We, we always look forward to playing Fylde. Um, it's our like, closest derby, isn't it? So, yeah, it should be a good game. It was a good game the last time. Now you may have seen that Burnley Football Club recently launched its audio content across all major platforms. Kicking things off with a new podcast, Halftime Talks, here's a look at what great audio content you can listen to. I think I've questioned myself in the leadership role on some occasions because I'm very much like, if somebody shouts at me, I'll take it on board and prove them wrong. So I'll be like, <sighs> I'm a bit straight down the line, so if somebody's like doing something wrong, <laughs> or you can see they're not making the effort, yeah. I'm one to call somebody out. I'm, I probably have to yeah, work we've out had a couple of barnies, aren't we? Yeah. <laughs> so I can do it with Sammy, but I know she's going to bite me head off back. <laughs> can you just kind of describe what it was like for you growing up in Burnley, and what kind of the football scene was like for you um, at a young age? Yeah, um, my mum and dad uh, still live in Burnley, my older brother and his family still live in Burnley, so it's not like we, you know, touch base and then, you know, we're, we're kind of very much afar from it now, it's very much a heart of, of where our family is. And, uh, and growing up there, just on, on Tomberdon Road, uh, right by Townley Park, just up on Turf Moor. I mentioned earlier, I played football one week, rugby union the next, I'm not a massive fan of rugby union. The strictest person at the school was the games master, um, and boy was he strict. And you were told to man up, uh, there was no expression. You just got on with things, no opportunity to talk and discuss. Uh, I think we've moved on, and thankfully we've moved on. I mention it all the time, the players here are pretty firm-minded. The environment that we set, the way that we work, is always pretty positive anyway. Um, but what it does, it just it enhances the fact that they are putting the work in. And that cut run sort of gave us that belief in terms of... I remember when we played, I remember we played Chelsea, remember the analysis? Mm. So yeah. he's, he's put their team up. And obviously he goes through strengths and weaknesses of the oppositions and he's he put the strengths up and then he's put weaknesses. He's gone, turn it off, they don't have any weaknesses. <laughs> Just have a go, lads. And that sort of summed him up, really. And it was like, oh, all right, we might as well have a go. Now, there's no doubt that Maxwell Cornet has been a real hit with the Clarets family. The Ivorian International talks life at Burnley following his summer transfer from Lyon. Je suis vraiment très content d'être là. Euh, C'est vraiment un début euh, rêvé pour, pour moi. Être décisif directement pour l'équipe, c'est super. Je dois, je dois tout faire pour continuer comme ça. J'aime l'atmosphère. Euh, L'accueil que, que le public euh, m'a donné quand je suis arrivé et, et je suis vraiment reconnaissant pour, pour ça. Et c'est pour ça que chaque week-end, chaque match, j'essaie de donner le, le maximum de moi-même. Cornet Oh, that's magnificent Maxwell Cornet A breathtaking goal C'était un moment incroyable. Parce que marquer en première ligue, c'est vraiment un moment incroyable. Donc c'est une balle qui vient de, de la droite de Vidra. Et euh, je la prends en une touche sans me poser de questions. Et, et, et c'était super. C'était super. C'est un but qui en a amené d'autres. J'essaie de, de préparer mes matchs euh, du mieux possible chaque week-end. Pouvoir donner le meilleur de moi-même euh, en match. Et, euh, et je suis vraiment très content. C'est complètement différent parce que parce qu'à Lyon, je jouais euh, latéral gauche, 
Euh, et ici, je suis, je suis attaquant, euh, un poste euh, auquel j'ai commencé depuis longtemps. Et, euh, et c'est plus facile pour moi de, de me retrouver devant les buts et, et du coup de marquer beaucoup plus de buts. L'intensité, l'intensité est complètement différente. L'intensité est complètement différente et euh, le jeu va, va beaucoup plus vite. Donc euh, voilà, on doit vraiment être préparé, bien se reposer match après match, bien récupérer pour être encore performant le, le week-end. Le plus difficile, je dirais, quand je suis arrivé, c'est la barrière de la langue. De, euh, ne pas pouvoir m'exprimer, euh, demander certaines, certaines choses quand je ne comprends pas, mais, euh, mais ça n'a pas. Ça n'a pas été long, l'intégration a été tellement facile parce que mes coéquipiers m'ont mis tellement à l'aise. Et euh, quand c'est comme ça, il y a juste à laisser parler le football. Le coach me met vraiment à l'aise, me laisse euh, la liberté de pouvoir m'exprimer devant, tout en travaillant aussi pour l'équipe. Et euh, même si tout n'est pas encore parfait, euh, je, je travaille pour ça. J'essaie de comprendre euh, les déplacements de mes partenaires, ce que mes partenaires apprécient, pour pouvoir les mettre dans, dans les meilleures conditions et que eux puissent me mettre aussi dans les meilleures conditions. Donc euh, c'est de bon augure pour la suite. Voilà, donc on, on reste humble et on continue de travailler. And that's it for this month's show. Thanks for watching. Following last weekend's six goal thriller against Crystal Palace, it's time to welcome another London club to Turf Moor for more excitement in the Premier League. Thank you.